Yeah, yeah. <laughs> MD. JPB. It's only right, baby. Yeah. Why you mad? I got a bad bro. Name hot in these streets, no Tabasco. But I'm so stuck, that's a fact, yo. And if you think I'm running, you can run it back, yo. Go on, run it back. You know that I run it. Everything you wanna do, I already done it. And I got your little boo telling me she love me. I got this one. Damn, it's gonna be a long night. Yo oh guys, what is up? It is me, Prince of this, and I'm back here with another video. And today, I am doing What If Naruto at Joko's Powers Part 3 Domain. And before we begin, um, I'm still on, going on strong, still no symptoms. I appreciate you guys still giving attention to the newest video. And when we hit 19k, and we will, I'm going to release What If Asta Had Gilgamesh's Powers. I'm going to make it a movie and a special, and I hope you guys will enjoy it. It will be extremely short, obviously, because I will have to fit a bunch of stuff in there, but it also will be long. I mean, you'll get to see a bunch of stuff just flashed at you. And I'll have Asta have a pretty good backstory. I'm not going to make him just like a person who has incredible powers. He's going to have a reason why he has those powers. And it's going to make it interesting. All right, let's begin. The last part started with Naruto brutally beating up Zabuza. And when Haku came, he beat him up as well. However, he brought them to Tazuna's after and healed them before letting them go. And, well, more so, they left right away. And during... uh. His stay, he befriended Inari in a sort of way and made him believe his land could be saved. And when Zabuza and Haku meet Team 7 again, Zabuza would kill Gato himself. But Naruto setting uh, while Gato and his men on fire. This saved the village, with Team 7 then heading back home, where they would meet Gara and his team, with Naruto and Gara almost duking it out, but Baki and Kakashi intervened. This stopped their fight for now, and they would meet again at the training exams. In the exams, Naruto met Lee, but they agreed to fight properly on a big stage, and after the written test, they go to the Force of Death, where Orochimaru would attack. Naruto and Sasuke fight him, with Naruto hurting him so bad that he ran away, so Sasuke does not get the curse mark, and the two would meet up with Hinata, who had left a head with their scroll, and when they find her, she had beaten Dosu, Kin, and Zaku, before they then head to the main spot, where they meet Gara and his siblings. As they do, Naruto, instead of being loud, actually walks away, telling Sasuke and Hinata to follow. There's no point right now. That's a first, Sasuke would say, as Naruto would say, it's just not worth it. The team then leaves with Tamari saying, he really weirds me out. And Conqueror would say, you're telling me. He's like, Gara. What was that? Gara would ask, and Conqueror says it was nothing. The them saying there is, with Gara also saying there's no point in actually fighting right now. So, they will have to be patient. And they actually head off and uh, go to their waiting rooms, I guess you could say. And Naruto, um, as he opens his room... He looks around and scowls before backing out and instantly closing as we cut to Hinata sitting down in her room when she hears a knock and she gets happy. She goes and opens the door to see a grumpy Naruto. I knew it was you. I got bored, Naruto would exclaim. As Hinata would say, didn't you just find your room? Naruto then nods and she laughs saying he can come in and he does and she closes the door. I leave the rest to your imagination but the farthest they will go is cuddling because they're starting to realize they both are like kind of are like each other but they're like also 13 years old so i'm not doing any weird shit they're just hanging out so five days pass with some people making it and some not making it and they are all gathered in front of hiruzen and their senseis for the finals but then they find out there are too many of them and they were going to do a preliminary right now this is when kabuto raises his hand saying i would like to drop out please the party looks at him asking if he's sure and he nods i barely made it here i cannot fight right now Alright, melee, Hiruzen would say. As he leaves, everyone makes way for him, but Naruto looks at him like he's hiding something, and Hiruzen takes notice of this. I have to talk to him later, Hiruzen would think. During the five uh, days, by the way, parts of Orochimaru were found along with his blood and in the forest, and there was obvious signs of struggle and battle, with Naruto being involved because the area was burnt by lava release. So everyone is, well, all the ninja who know are on guard. But anyway, we're going to begin the fights. The first fight is actually Sasuke versus Yoro, and he easily beats him up because he's on a whole other level compared to the original. And as Naruto sees this happen, Lee walks up to Naruto saying, Hi, looks like I got here a bit late. That's because you're pathetic. That's so harsh for no reason, he would say. As Naruto scoffs saying, If you don't like it, train harder. You're basically an addict at this point. That I am, Lee would say. It's the only thing I can do correctly. That's not a good thing, Naruto would exclaim. Lee then laughs at this, with Neji then asking Tenten since when Naruto started hanging out with Lee, and Tenten would say, around the time he was like 9, 
and Naruto was eight? I don't know. It's just a rumor. But after he started hanging out with him, his power skyrocketed. That's how Lee started learning Taijutsu, apparently, from Sky Sensei. After Sasuke finishes his fight, he's then walking back to the stands, and Naruto and Naruto and Hinata would just wave hi to him. When Sakura would actually, well, Hinata just waves hi to him. Naruto just scoffs. This is when Sakura would actually get in his way, saying, "Oh my God, Sasuke, hi! I I've been meaning to talk with you." Then Ino also runs in, saying she has been waiting to talk with him, and Sasuke actually kind of flips the script, saying, "Okay, tell me what you wanted to say." This freezes up the two girls as they realize they actually have nothing special to actually talk about. And we're just basically going to suck his dick and just like, what's it called? Like they were just going to shower him with compliments. And Sasuke would then say, that's what I thought. Go train guys, seriously, you're wasting your time here. He then walks past the two, giving them a reality check. But while Sasuke is, well, I mean, while Sakura is frustrated, Ina was more so realizing that she really has nothing to talk about when she talks to Sasuke and simply wants his attention. But this isn't really, she doesn't really have a reason, you know? And realizing this, she goes off by herself to think. Next up will be Shino versus Zaku when Shino wins, Sakura versus Ino, and the fight is a tie. But Sakura barely, like, win, like, survives because she has not had enough development to be strong enough yet. So, yeah, that sucks. Then Tomari versus Tenten, and Tomari wins, and then Sh uh, Shikamaru versus Kin, and Shikamaru wins. Then it is actually finally Naruto's turn as he gets down to the ring and meets Kiba. Let's get this over with. Don't underestimate me, Kiba would say, as he's actually kind of shaking under his breath. And as the proper sets to begin, Kiba feeds Akamaru a food pill before then using beast mimicry. Akamaru would change color, becoming more fierce and also red, as he then growls and he poofs into a man beast of Kiba. He's going all out. Good choice, Choji would say. As Kiba and Akamaru then all get on, uh, then get on all fours and start dashing towards Naruto together before then joining together and spinning using fang over fang at full power and speed. The amount of speed they're picking up is insane, causing shockwaves, but Naruto isn't even moving. T Tamari would then say, Don't tell me he's gonna. As the attack lands, Naruto holds his hand out, tensing up his muscles, and this makes his veins show as the attack hits and a shockwave cracks the ground, with Naruto not even moving one step, using one hand to stop the fang over fang attack. Pathetic, Naruto would exclaim, as he then grabs and separates Kiba and Akamaru from each other and holds them up before then l just leaving everyone in shock. Naruto then lets them go and slams a palm strike into their stomachs while releasing his disaster flame, sending him flying and they would slam into walls. As they do, Akamaru goes back to his normal form, just poofs, and they are both unmoving, having this huge bruise on them. The Prata would say, um, Naruto Uzumaki wins. Yeah, duh, Naruto would say. He then starts walking away with everyone thinking his strength is absurd as he didn't even use chakra to stop that attack and that would hurt anyone on impact. And as Naruto heads up to the stands, he tells Hinata to win because it is, uh, well, her up next. Well, uh, I'll try my best. No. When, Naruto would say. He is clearly serious and Hinata would say okay despite being nervous as her and Neji then head down into the stage. And as they do, no one really knows what's going to happen. In this timeline, Hinata is more confident and strong. And at this age, she is able to beat the genius that would have been Hin uh, Hanabi. And... You know, people consider her a genius, but her and Eji never, never actually fought. This is going to be amazing, Lee would say. As the Prata begins the fight, the two would disappear and appear in the middle of the stage, clashing with palm strike after palm strike that creates shockwaves, blowing back the Proctor before we can even jump away and get out of the way. As the Proctor is blown back and lands, he would then look to see a fierce fight, a fight going down with Hinata and Neji going blow for blow without even stepping away from where they are. Incredible. It's like they're not even kids. When Neji strikes, Hinata blocks or deflects it or attacks back, or when Hinata attacks Neji, he does the same, all the way until Hinata slams a strike into Neji's stomach, making him stumble back. Then she kicks him in the face, and as he blocks it, he everyone then kind of hears a crack, and indicating that his arm has been shattered from trying to block Hinata's blow. And then the attack then goes to his solar plexus from well, Hinata, and Neji would say, shit. Then she starts doing the uh, 64 pounds technique, you know, six, like 10, whatever the points are. She goes all the way until she actually hits 10 points in another three seconds once to the shock of everyone. And then she goes and goes and reaches 64 points, making Neji's eyes go blank. But instead of being angry, he cannot help but smile. You used to be so frail, Lady Hinata. I guess you can change destiny. He falls down face first and Hinata would calm herself breathing out saying, man, I thought I was going to die. You thought you were gonna die, they would all think. Hinata then turns to Naruto and Sasuke with the peace sign and Naruto would smile putting a thumbs up to the surprise of everyone but Sasuke and Hinata. And Shikamaru would just walk up and ask, you can smile? 
Naruto, angry, would turn to him, yelling, Of course I can, you bastard! And Shikamaru would say, Sorry, it's just surprising, you know? As Hinata sees Naruto smile, she surprises herself when she blushed and covers her mouth, not trying to show her face. What the heck? That's so unfair, she would think. Everyone is left in awe at this match uh, ending this way and the way it did because it showed the truth that Hinata was indeed a genius and as she runs up to the stance, Sasuke says that was pretty awesome. I thought you were nervous. Hinata would say, yeah, but when Naruto fights me, it's like he has this fear that he sends at you. Naji isn't that scary. That is true, Sasuke would say, scratching, uh, stroking his chin, and Naruto would say, hey, I'm right here. The two then start teasing Naruto, just as Lee would jump down into the stage, and as he does, he spins, throwing away his weights that slam into the walls, uh, the surrounding walls, cracking them. This turns everyone's attention to him, and they are silenced. Lee would then say, Neji, I don't know if you can hear me, but after that amazing fight, I can't help myself. Can we start right now? Laura looks down at him with a smile, but the proctor gets in his way, saying, whoa, 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 let's at least move Neji out of the way first. Oh, right, uh, my apologies, Lee, we would say. The brother then sighs in relief, and a stretcher is brought, and he, uh, Neji is moved over to the infirmary, and then Gara teleports down with his sand, and the fight is allowed to begin. The Proctor quickly gets out of the way this time, with Lee getting in a stance and entering the third gate with relative ease as he bursts with insane amount of chakra that Gara gets on guard, kind of protecting against and releasing his sand out of his gourd. I'll end this in one move, Lee would say. Gara would say, that's a pretty bold statement of relief, Ninja, but I have someone to meet. I'm the same, that's why I'll end this fast, Lee would respond. The tension would arise with everyone being on edge as Gar would create and throw a gigantic wave of sand at Lee. Tenten would then yell, Lee, get out of the way! As Lee, however, stares down this attack coming at him and he breathes out calmly and he disappears in the blink of an eye, appearing right in front of a shot Gara, and the wave of sand would explode, hitting and carving the walls of the arena, shocking everyone because like the massive, what would have happened if that sand actually hit Lee? And this is when Lee would put his hand forward just as Gaara's sand appears to protect him as a sort of shield and Lee does the unthinkable. With a one inch punch he blows away the sand and Gaara's protective shield slamming him into a wall and cracking it as well. Impossible, Gaara would think. How? What is that form? Gaara would be stuck in the wall with his head hung over as the proctor then jumps in and starts to count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Three, two, one. The winner of this fight is Rock Lee, he would say. As Lee hearing this deactivates the gates, and Guy would start crying at this, and Kakashi would say, You must be very proud, huh? Guy would then say, Yes, he's worked so hard for this, you have no idea. Lee then says, Naruto, now I shall get to fight you as well. Only if you keep winning, but yeah, Naruto would say. This makes Sasuke think, I don't know how he can be so confident after seeing that massacre. It he is then caught off by the sound of roaring, with everyone's eyes widening as Gaara jumps down from where he is, now mutating into a beast. Conqueror would say, oh no, he was pushed too far. Gaara, stop. Gaara then sends out this massive amount of bloodlust that would just keep, and he would just keep repeating the word mother, and he's stuck in this kind of bizarre trance. Obviously, the kids don't know what is going on, but the adults do, and the sand ninja are the only ones who know about Shukaku as well, and that he is being released. But just as they're about to do something, the Jonin are about to jump in. Naruto jumps down and dashes right in front of Lee, facing Gara. Kakashi would then say, Naruto, move out of the way, you can't handle this. Naruto, what are you gonna do, Lee would think. Naruto then ignores the words of Kakashi and would slowly cross his arms before then saying, Have you lost her goddamn mind? He himself would send out this massive wave of bloodlust, much similar to Orochimaru, making everyone see themselves die in a ton of different ways, and when they come to, they see a passed out Gara, who Naruto bends down and picks up. <sighs> you idiot, how can you lose control that easily, Naruto would think. Hinata would then yell, Naruto, are you okay? Why would I be hurt, Naruto would ask. Hinata would then say, um, right. Naruto then walks uh, up to the proctor, startling him because he was also hit by this wave of bloodlust, and Naruto then asks to bring Gara to the infirmary himself. Um, yes, follow me. He then starts leading him away, as Konkur and Tomari would then run over, saying that they're going as well. He's our brother, we can, right? The proctor then says that's fine, and they leave with Hiruzen asking everyone if they're okay, and they say yes while mumbling a bit, and Asuma walks over to his father, asking, Is that what I think it was? Hiruzen would then say it wasn't the fox, just bloodlust. Pure bloodlust. What a terrifying kid, Asuma would say. Ditto, Hiruzen would say. After this, Choji Dosu fight and Dosu wins and everyone is gathered with Hiruzen saying not to worry about Gara because he will be fine and everything is fine in general. It's just a little mishap. And Sasuke would ask, but, but what was that? The monster he was turning into? That's classified, Hiruzen would say. 
but lucky for us, Naruto took care of it. Shikamaru would then say, what the hell did you do, by the way? And Naruto would say, it's just a little bloodlust, get over it. A little, they would all think. Regardless, everything was okay, and now the next match was up, and we're, be, um, we're being set up, we're, they're not happening right now. And it's the same as the original, um, except Lee is actually going to be fighting Naruto, and he's not just fighting Sasuke. But you know, well, and Sakura obviously are not in there. And uh, uh, yeah, everything is just, you know, everything is good. A few hours then pass as we cut to Gara, and he wakes up in the hospital bed he was put in, and he would sit up to hear Naruto say, Calm the hell down. You. Naruto would say, yeah, me. You stopped me. Naruto then nods, asking what he did and what the hell that was, and Gara would smirk. I thought you knew, since you have one as well. That was the one-tailed Biju Shukaku, otherwise known as the Ichibi. Naruto is taken aback and think this through, then. I have the nine tails. You don't seem angered. I was, Gara would say. As Naruto would say, that's because that bastard can't do shit to me. If anything, his anger powers me, but he can't take over. Thanks for telling me. And stop doing stupid shit like that. You'll live a little bit longer. As he is about to leave, Gar then stops him asking how he is still sane. Naruto would then turn around saying, My friends. He then poofs away, and this isn't just the clone Naruto, he actually learned how to do the teleportation due to. So as he just teleports away, in then run Tamari and Kankuro, who asks if Gar is okay. I'm fine. Sorry for losing it. Tamari would then say, Oh, there's no need to apologize. You can control it. I don't think anyone could. Gar then looks out the window of his hospital and says, let's leave. Clearly, this this isn't going to work. This plan is not going to work. The fox is too powerful. As he teleports away, Naruto walks out onto the streets of Konoha aimlessly. And Naruto isn't a very emotional person, despite how he acts. He thinks things through, actually. But hearing he had a monster inside him made him rethink his life a bit. <sighs> when I find out the bastard who did this, he's going to die. His anger face catches the attention of everyone around as they're slightly frozen, but Naruto passes by and just doesn't care. But then he finds a weird scene as he sees Jiraiya peeking into the woman's bath and he starts leaving not caring, but he hears Hinata's annoying voice in his head telling him to do the right thing. And as Jiraiya is peeking, he finds himself being picked up. Hey, what's the big- He then turns to see an anger Naruto who asks, You trying to die early? You are a kid, right? Jiraiya would ask. Naruto, instead of entering, would just drag him away as he cried, missing all the action in the bath. And so Naruto stops in the same spot as in the original where they kind of just met and started training. And he lets him go, starting to walk away. Stop being a pervy old man. Jiraiya then gets a bit more serious, asking, You found out, didn't you? Naruto then freezes up and turns around, asking if he was the reason why he had this beast. And he said, No, but I am here to help you control it. What do you think? Wanna learn under the great Tochei Sanin? And as he asked this, Naruto would swipe at him while weaving a tiger sign to his confusion, only for him to then hear something as he turns to see a mini volcano form on a tree. Oh shit. Jiraiya jumps back using the body flicker and the volcano will release a sharp violent stream of magma which would absolutely ravage part of the forest. And as the attack stops, Jiraiya looks up to see the catastrophic damage and he would gulp in fear. Naruto then walks through the smoke cloud caused by the attack and with a smile he would say, At least you can dodge that much. You're testing me, huh? Jiraiya would say. He then sits up saying, So, you have lava release just like the Mizukage, but a little different. I guess, but that woman's got nothing on me. You're very arrogant, huh? But that's good. Defiance makes you stronger. Naruto would then say, It's not arrogance, it's confidence. But what can you even teach me about this thing? This question kind of causes Jiraiya to smile, as he would say. You'll see. The two then kind of start training, and because Naruto has been able to control his emotions so much, and being able to draw now, uh, draw emotions and use them the way he has been, using Kurama's chakra was natural, and even a little cloak of one tail increases power tenfold. And as he entered the state, he would hold out his hand, and to him and Jiraiya's shock, he would create purple flames. Damn, kid, nice color. They evolved. Interesting, Naruto would think. He then makes the flames disappear and would ask Jiraiya if he knew who put the seal on him. I do, yes. Then tell me. Jiraiya, however, shakes his head as his playful demeanor disappears. Before you can learn his name, you need to get just a little bit stronger. Naruto, hearing this, then smiles devilishly, asking Jiraiya, who is terrified by this smile, honestly, if he beat him, then would he tell him about the man who put the seal on him? Or woman, no discrimination. Jiraiya then freezes up, saying, then you'll know. Let's do it then, Naruto would say. I have the perfect spot, and you better keep your word. 
He then jumps away as Jiraiya would follow him, wondering if he could even win. And time skips to the day of the final fight. Everyone gathers in the stadium to watch the final fights. And, you know, people are betting, all that type of stuff. It's the type of thing it is. It's just uh, a rave. And inside the arena will be Naruto, Hinata, Shikamaru, Tamari, Kankuro, Neji. And, yeah, I think that's about it. If I forgot anyone, I apologize. Oh, I did forget someone. Shino. Wait, is Shino in there? Wait a minute. I think I messed this up a little bit. Okay, whoever is supposed to be in there, like in the original, is in there. I'm sorry if I messed up something. And, uh, you know, people would just be talking about Naruto instead of focusing on everyone else. Like, so that's him, right? The fox kid? I don't like him, but he's actually kind of known to be strong, right? It's annoying. Everyone is just cheering for different people. The Hugo clan is here. The Konoha 11 are here. Almost everyone is here, except for Sasuke, who is actually late. He was and then settles down the crowd saying, thank you for coming. For coming to watch these young shinobi battle it out for whatever goal they may have. I invite you to witness them. Let us begin. Everyone then cheers as he sits back down, turning to the Kazekage, and he would say, I'm sorry, your son didn't make it past the preliminary stage. The Kazekage would then exclaim, he's still on the stand, so he will have to use this opportunity to learn from his failure, or I have nothing else I can do for him. What a harsh father, Hiruzen would think. The stage is then clear with everyone else leaving, leaving only Lee and Naruto being... Just, le uh, you know, they're left in there after having everything explained to them, the rules explained to them, and the partner would jump away and yell to begin. As soon as he does, Lee would then take off his bracelets, which would fall, cratering into the ground and causing an eruption of sand to everyone's shock. He was wearing that this entire time? You can do it, Lee, Tencent would yell, as Lee then blitzes Naruto, using dusk the dust cloud to kind of catch him off guard, and he would then throw a kick at him, but Naruto would stop it. Lee would then keep disappearing and appearing with a barrage of attacks, which Naruto keeps deflecting and dodging. Wow, I can't even see them move. Are these guys even kids? Soon, Lee would finally disappear and kick Naruto from below into the sky and, you know, he would hit him right in the jaw. And everyone is wowed as he then jumps into the air and wraps him up with bandages and then he uses the primary lotus and lets Naruto crash into the ground after spinning. And while he jumps away after doing this, everyone watches to see if Naruto would be affected and Lee would smile asking, Now you take me seriously? Out of the dust comes Naruto, dusting himself off without a single scratch to everyone's shock as he would smile brightfully. You're awesome, Lee. Lee is wide-eyed, asking, did you just call me by my name? Naruto then holds his hand out, creating a flame, and says, is this that weird coming from your rival? Hey, that kid's kind of cool. Don't be stupid, he's a fox. I, I know, but he he's still cool as hell. And everyone gets a bit interested as Lee would then enter the fourth gate, just as Naruto attacks this time and appears instantly in front of him with a palm strike. Shit, Lee would think, as Naruto strikes him and releases powerful red flames, which then turn purple and send Lee flying into the arena wall, leaving a crack which was spread, leaving everyone gasping. As Lee would be jumping out of the crack, he hears something weird and looks down to see an insect, and in an instant, an explosion occurs, causing a bunch of wind to hit everyone. Lee would then land from the explosion down below, bruised, and he instantly is attacked by Naruto, who, and he instantly attacks Naruto, who counters him and sends a punch in his face. This sends him flying, but then Naruto appears behind him and grabs him by the head before slamming it down, causing a giant eruption of dust. Come on, Lee, I have great expectations. He then lets go and Lee gets up, entering the sixth gate, really pushing himself, making Guy worry that he may not live if he goes any further. As Lee turns, bursting with ridiculous amounts of power, he would kind of buck buckle a bit under the pressure of it. I need to use it now. Guy would then yell, be careful, Lee. And Lee would nod as he blitzes Naruto and appears right in front of him within a one inch punch that would cause a great shock wave that rips up the ground behind Naruto. And it's as if for a moment he completely destroys Naruto's internal organs as he would fall to his knees with his body steaming. Damn, he went a little bit crazy there, the people would be saying, as they would be wondering if anyone can even survive that. As Lee is about to land another blow, he's then forced out of the sixth gate as he notices he is spewing blood from his mouth. Looks like this is my. Lee then stops as he sees and looks and sees Naruto twitch and he nervously smiles as before everyone, Naruto rises up, bursting with chakra. Are you kidding me? That was everything I had, he would say, as Naruto would raise his head saying, that hurt you bastard. Whoa, he really got up, they'd be saying, as he Naruto would say, woo, Naruto, good job, I knew you'd get back up. Everyone would then applaud for this moment, saying Naruto was incredible, as Lee then said, well, it looks like you win this one. Why didn't you dodge? I saw you. You followed me. You knew. Naruto didn't say because I'm not such a wimp that I couldn't receive my own friend's attack. 
this declaration nice sort of a sort of fire in the villagers as they respect his way of thinking and start to see naruto differently like than before even more and lee forfeits with the proctor then declaring naruto the winner and he would help up lee back to the stands as they're walking over naruto would say you almost got control yeah and you seem happier today which is weird for you did something happen naruto then says i finally learned who my parents were Lee hearing this is very happy for his friend, asking him if they were a ninja and Naruto nods, but does not let him know anything else. After this match, next up is Sasuke versus Hinata, but Sasuke was nowhere to be found, so they postponed the fight for now. The partner then says, alright, since Sasuke is not here yet, Kankuro and Shino Aburame, start your fight. As Shino walks down, Tamari would then ask Kankuro if he still wanted to go through with this, and he would think back to when they met Orochimaru, after he tried to mark Sasuke and failed. About a week back, Gaara, Tamari, and Kankuro got to meet Orochimaru again, and as usual, he is imposing. It was night, and they were meeting up outside of Konoha. You're taking us out of the plan, Gaara would exclaim, and Orochimaru would say, I'm sure you know why. He didn't even lay a finger on you. And he destroyed you, Gaara would say. Orochimaru hearing this smiles more as he would wonder how Gaara knew, and he would ask, and Gaara says they also have an information network. He beat you as well. Naruto Uzumaki is far too strong for you to handle, so why are you still here? Hmm, that's for me to worry about, Orochimaru would say. Feel free to do as you wish. Kankuro would then say, because of you, even if we do try to leave, they'll find out eventually. We are already conspirators with you. Well, too bad, Orochimaru would say. He then disappears, leaving the simly, uh, siblings angered as back in the present, Gaara steps in and uh, steps up and yells, Kankuro is giving up. This causes a bit of an upset with the proctor then asking if he was sure because they cannot take it back. But then Conqueror says, he's right. I can't. He wins. But this Shino is the winner by default, which does not exactly make him happy, but he takes it. This kind of makes it boring, but next up was Sasuke versus Hinata. And as she steps in, everyone waits for Sasuke to come with them wondering if he was even going to make it. But in a flash, Sasuke and Kakashi would appear right in the arena with the coolest fucking entrance to this day. Sorry I'm late, Sasuke would say. Hinata would say, wow, that was really cool. Everyone had collapsed with the arrival of Kakashi and, uh, well, Sasuke. And then Kakashi gets out of the way and wishing good luck to both of them. I don't need luck, Sasuke would say. The brother then begins the match and jumps out of the way with the two dashing and clashing with an intense battle of taijutsu. As this battle was going on, Naruto was in the stands and he would notice people looking at him. But for once, it's not with hate, which weirds him. It's like they had this specific goal. Oi. Watch the match, not me. He scares everyone who was trying to like look at him, like kind of interested, but they are now starting to understand this is simply how he talks, and they're kind of getting used to it. The fight then begins with Hinata and Sasuke raging on with their battle, but once Sasuke is caught off guard, Hinata then hits all the points in his right arm in an instant. Shit, I can't feel anything, Sasuke would think, as he would jump away trying to flow a chakra, but it won't work, as Hinata then attacks Sasuke, with Sasuke only being able to dodge. I should have asked Naruto to fight me, just, just in case... Even with this Tutomoe, Sasuke cannot keep up perfectly, so he decides to use a distraction. When Hinata manages to strike him, he turns into a log, and Hinata would look around quickly. He disappeared? Naruto would then scoff, thinking, Headhunter Jutsu. I'll have to learn that. Hinata then soon finds uh, Sasuke and strikes the ground, causing a massive crater and the ground to just rip up, but Sasuke jumps out from behind her, and the sound of his story echoes. Dang it! Hinata would think, as when she turns, Hinata would dodge only to be struck in the shoulder, making everyone gasp as she bursts with blood, but Sasuke does not stop attacking and runs while piercing her flesh all the way until he stopped and threw her to the sky. Lady Hinata, Neji would yell, and Hinata is thrown into the air and Sasuke appears above her with an ass kick, which Hinata blocks, but she slams into the ground, causing an eruption of uh, dust. Sasuke then lands as the dust is cleared by Hinata's wind palm, and both of them now each had one arm they couldn't use, and they were exhausted. Everyone was just on, edge of, on the edge of the seat, but something weird then happened. From above, Naruto notices feathers falling and scoffs. Release. The people behind him will be protected from the Genjutsu coming down, but others in the stadium start to fall asleep as Hinata and Sasuke stop and see it. We're under attack, Ino would yell, as from behind, at someone from Orochimaru's you know, gang attacks and a battle starts with some ninja being able to escape the Genjutsu, but some not being able to. Naruto then turns to the people behind him and yells, Leave. Now. Although scared, they run and a loud crash and thud would be heard as the battling of the nin as well, the battling ninja would look up to see Hiruzen fighting himself, and they don't know with who, but they can assume it's Orochimaru. 
As Naruto looks up, he is then attacked by a masked ninja who stabs him with a kunai, but he would catch his arm and pull him in and slam him into the ground. And he would crash through floors, through floors, and just down at destructive speed, like below and through the stadium. Weakling. He then jumps down to the arena and holds out his hand with Sasuke and Hinata starting to see themselves regenerate. Healing Jutsu? How the hell should I know? Naruto would yell. And as he yells, the two are left in confusion as they don't know how to react because Naruto is not a healer. But then he says, I'll tell you later. I'm gonna go meet the old man. He would then leap to the roof where he sees two men throwing down and just at this moment the ground would shake as Orochimaru's giant snake would poof in and start ravaging everything uh, you know, in the village. Naruto then takes a step forward but he would be surrounded by the sound four. Orochimaru would say, sorry Naruto, we'll have a rematch later. How about no? The sound four would then all be grabbed from behind as they are thrown away by Naruto's clones who jump at them with giant fire blasts. Die, they would all yell. Naruto then appears right in front of Orochimaru just as he is about to strike Hiruzen and he squeezes his head, like he grabs his head and squeezes it as it would burst with flames and explode. Be careful Naruto. Naruto then lets Orochimaru's lifeless body go and he looks to see Jiraiya was actually now here with the toad and he smiles, but then Orochimaru regurgitates himself. What do you propose we do, Hiruzen would ask. Since when did you get so damn soft, old man? Naruto would reply. As Orochimaru then screams, releasing snakes that attack in a storm, but he risen and enlarges uh, his adamantite staff and thrusts, blowing all the snakes away, only to see something like a bit bizarre. Naruto and Ruzin would then see coffins holding Hashirama and Tobirama Senju as they would step out of the reanimation, um, I guess you could say coffins, and then a purple barrier would be erected around them. He cornered us, Ruzin would say. Naruto, however, says, no he hasn't. A barrier, huh? Let me try. Yoiki Tenkai. And this is the end of the third part. Welcome to the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. The sound might sound a bit weird at the end of the video. Sorry about that. Um, probably like in the last four minutes, you heard a bunch of like zooming and weird stuff. Um, I hope you don't hear it now. But if you do, I apologize for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And more videos will be coming. Hopefully, I can finish the Asta What If and post it. That's gonna be the special. I hope you guys can really enjoy it because it's going to be awesome. I haven't finished it yet, I meaning it's not gonna come out right away, but you know. All right, uh, I'm going to end it off here. Uh, stay safe. Um, I know I have to stay safe. I really have no choice. Still in quarantine. Fun. All right, I'll see y'all later. Peace.